Designers, creatives, what's good? Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm just editing this video that you're about to watch, you're about to see uh, this interview, and I wanted to just provide a little bit of context before we get in there. Today, I am talking with Chris Logsdon. He is a brand director with the Sasha Group out of New York, and I, I interviewed him on the Quickie Podcast, had a great interview. Uh, I'll link that down in the show notes here. But I also, uh, a couple of weeks later, dove into brand and color and Pantone and all that kind of stuff with him. So in this interview, he has a brand new Pantone set, sort of like a mini unboxing of that Pantone set, but we talk specifically about color and how it relates to branding and how print and Pantones all tie into that mix and the importance of color when it comes to branding and especially when you're building those brand guidelines. So just wanted to briefly introduce this conversation and uh, I'll let you back to the introduction first and then we'll get to the conversation. So. But in the meantime, yeah, man, I love I love the fresh smell of new Pantone books. The company splurged after I said I need this, um, and you know we, we we got it all here. So one thing that um, again, and I 100% appreciate your time. You know, and mm -hmm. if I could ever repay you, please let me know. I can do that. Um, was just getting a more in depth, um, uh, just having a chat around color real quick. And again, we don't have to go too crazy. I, I want to be, be mindful of your time. I have, I have an hour, um, but just want to be mindful uh, or just get a more, have a more in-depth conversation because it seems like you are much more knowledgeable in this, in this field than, than I am. Um, but the part of, for context, part of um, why I wanted to just have this conversation and just dig deep into color is just some of my own frustrations with moments in my process where I'm like, man, I, I think this is right. But I don't know if it's right yeah. um, when when specifically uh, talking about the topic of, or on on the topic of color. So, um, as you know, like I'm now sort of in the in the branding brand director's role position here at the Sasha Group, and you know certainly you know once we're once we're done with the process, I create the final files mm -hmm. and handing them over in in proper you know what I think to be proper CMYK RGB format as well as you know PNGs vectors all that stuff. Um, and then along with that, I also, you know, a lot of times we create the logo or the brand book, which encompasses the logo guidelines, which breaks down, um, you know, the, uh, the, the there's, there's always a slide that talks about color. Here's your color. Here's the CMYK, RGB, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, colors, hex codes, all, all of the other bits. Yep. Yeah. That little, that little chunky paragraph that usually accompanies the, the large swatch of color that, that it sits on top of. Um, yeah. And just having done my my own, having my limited knowledge, like I, I think I'm doing it the right way, but I feel like I could probably have a bit more better understanding of it. Sure. Um, uh, especially now that we have clients that are yielding, that, that are doing some printed pieces like packaging, um, yeah. whatnot. So just, I think understanding it better. And I don't know where a good place to start is beyond this, this, this aside. I guess giving you a kind of giving you my process of what I do is typically, I guess I always go to um, when I have, when I have the color palette that we've aligned on, um, of course I understand the difference between CMYK and RGB. Yep. Um, just to kind of shoot out some questions here originally is like, is there on that color slide, for instance, in, in the logo guidebook, if I have a particular, let's just say uh, a red, right? Um, I go through, I always go right to Pancone Coded. Yep. Maybe is that the first place to go to? I don't know. I, I always go in, you know, in Adobe Illustrator, Pantone, all those, the, the, the long drop down menu. I go to Pantone Coded and I find the one that I think works best, um, CMYK, right? Um, so, yeah. So in that process, the, you, you really, 
you can start with Pantone coated. You can start with Pantone uncoated. It kind of depends on the brand. So for example, if you've got a really yeah. friendly brand and you know that they're going to be uncoated, recycled, natural papers, if they ever print anything, then you can start with the uncoated and just back it up with the coated. Right. On the other side of it, you can start with coated. Like it really doesn't matter. But what's important is that you need to go to both. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is if you take those Pantone books right now and if you flip open um, you can even do this uh, if they're uh, if they're unshrink if they're opened. I don't want to be like the guy forcing you to take off. No, the no, no. I, I want to put these to use. I've actually opened the coded already. Okay, so go to the coded, and I hate how they've done these new ones where you got to go to the table of contents in the back. You used to yeah. be able to just flip through in numerical order, but now well, they've got it all in shades. Well, I've noticed too that like they don't even give you like, and I maybe I, if I recall from ones I've I've seen in the past, like they don't even give you like proper CMYK breakdowns on these things. No, so that's where the bridge comes in. Uh, yeah, that's, so that's there's, really yeah, there's really solid cool. coated, uncoated, and coated paper. Um, so what I was going to say is start with if you find the page for Pantone 200 in both books, and I just pulled that number out of the air. Yeah. But it'll 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 give the example of what I'm what I'm trying to explain here. That's the other thing too. Is why does it go from like Pantone 156 and then next slide is Pantone 1495? Like what, what's that? because in their mind they are closer in shade than the actual numbers themselves. Got it. So they've organized it by shade and color and hue or whatever they'd picked okay. um, rather than numerical order. Now the older ones four or five years ago were in numerical order. So it was dead simple. That's but why now I'm, you've got to go to the table of contents. I haven't looked at them for so long now that I'm like now experiencing this, like what, how are these things? That, all right. So let's just use 200, right? So I found, yeah. um, let's see, 200. Page sixty-two. I'm in the I'm in the solid uncoated thing here. So page where the all right, where's the numbers on these things now? Bottom left corner, bottom right corner. Looks like bottom. Yep, page. All right, sixty-two. Yep. Pantone two hundred. Looks like it's like a crimson red. Yep, and it should be the same page in the other book. Hopefully. Oh really? Okay. All right, that helps. I might be full of shit with that one. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, on, on. You're right. Pantone. All right. Same page. 62. Yep. Okay, so, so, so without well, looking at them, I'm going to roll the dice here and I'm going to say that they are not identical. No, of course. Well, yeah. Well, I mean the, the uncoded, as you can imagine, looks a little, um, a little more muted, slightly muted than the, of course, polished looking yep. coded version in, in the coded one. Yep. And so the reason why I wanted to point that out is when you're creating a brand, you should be creating and selecting those colors both encoded and uncoded mm -hmm. because Pantone 200, if that's their coded Pantone, that might not be their uncoded Pantone. Got it. They might have a different number for uncoded. And where that comes in is you got to look at that and go up and down that page. Oh, maybe not. Maybe go back a couple pages, forward a couple pages and try and find the one that you feel represents the color the best in both books. And yeah, because again, to your point, you want them to be as close as possible, knowing there's going to be a difference. So the uncoded number might be 202, perhaps, versus 200. Exactly. Now, then, in um, and I'm not sure how much experience you have in this. So, in, in something like a brand book, then are you then giving them like the like here here's your red, here's your Pantone red, but then that the paragraph on the left, which is the coded, you know. Um, breakdown it's going to say pantone 200 but then you're going to have an uncoded paragraph it's going to say pantone 202 for the uncoded so correct. you and them that both sets on that particular swatch correct i would do that and i would also even make it to the point of of having a you know a copy and paste paragraph that you can reuse but that explains to the layperson why yeah. There's a coded and an uncoded number or in some sort of simple terms where somebody could read it and go, oh, okay, I understand why there are two different colors. I get it. Right, right. Now, taking this process even a step further, if you grab, I believe your set has the color bridge, it right? Does. Yep. So it doesn't matter whether you grab the coded or uncoded. Um, yeah, because coded right. one. So bust that open, flip open okay. a Pantone 200 and that thing. It's like an unboxing section here. Yeah, this is fantastic. I'm so glad I'm recording this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Dave, if you could just smell the paper that's coming out of this little unwrapped shrink wrap. Yep, I've had the experience. Smells good. Smells that's like, like you give it a little flick in the end, like money. Right? Yeah, it's almost, 
kind of reminds you um i'm not sure if you've ever done, like opening up baseball cards like that first like yeah card. i know what you're like, saying oh, this card smell very good okay so now i'm looking at the color bridge coded so find, find pantone 200 in there does it it is there an uncoded version of the bridge or there is there is i'm probably looking at it somewhere okay so now what same page probably too like that's 62 fingers crossed uh let's see let's see let's see i think we're gonna have it man these things are so thin i know they used to be thicker oh i see where we're looking okay so the all right so now so now what you're looking at there is you're looking at the coated pantone which should match your coated solid by side, by side comparison right by side is the cmyk comparison now in pantone 200's case that that's pretty close like it's not too bad but yeah, you can so, see as you flip through there's some colors that are nowhere near the cmyk equivalent yeah which then in your brand guide when you're creating if you're printing in cmyk and you're not using a pantone here are your cmyk values and they may not be a direct line across from their pantone number got it so then i'm looking at the pan our, our red here right pantone 200 yep um now, on the one on the left, it says C, which I'm assuming stands for coded. Correct. The one on the right says CP. What's the P stand for? Process. Got it. Yep. So full process color. Got it. Why wouldn't it say uncoded or what? So then you should have a color bridge um, oh, for, for uncoded, which will say 200U and then 200UP. All right, we're going to tear this one open now. Man, I'm getting you to open all of them. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> before warned, I opened up the Metallics one when I first got it. Just because. Oh, of course. That's the sexy one. All right, so 62 on this one. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Pantone 200, and then, yep, 200U and UP. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna put we're gonna put the codeds here together. My gosh, what a process! <laughs> cool. 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 Um. So then, so then break. So on the side by sides in, in the bridge, right? So um, the one on the left, it's it's RGB, right? Uh, nope. It's it's saying well, it's saying Pantone. 200 C underneath it. It's just giving me R the RGB breakdown as well as okay, the so it's giving you an RGB breakdown, but it's not actually produced with RGB. Right. And yeah. then so does it also here, have like X codes and stuff in there? Yeah. So, um, uh, on the, the one on the, uh, the one on the left here, oh, I'm sorry. So if I go to the very top, it says solid versus CMYK, right? So that's, yep. that's your point about like the, the process breakdown versus the actual Pantone solid color. Correct. Um, on the solid side for Pantone 200C, it does give me the RGB breakdown and the HTML. Text awesome. Code. Okay. The one on the right, the CP, um, is going to it gives me the uh, the four color breakdown, the CMYK. Perfect. Yep. So it's just giving you the tools, um, you know, that you need to to put this sucker together. Yep both online web so they're just expanding the information they're giving you but when you look at the solid not the bridge the solid one it'll have a formula underneath of it it'll have um you know underneath it'll say like transparent white rubine red whatever other colors are in there yeah and that's what threw me off because i'm like what what is that what are, yeah so the our pantone 200 if we're going to run with that right so um that is saying Pantone, uh, I'm, assu I'm assuming ruby red, rub, R-U-B. Rubine, yep. Rubine, yellow, yep. and black. And then it's giving me the numbers. Yep. So, for example, those numbers will add up to 100. Yep. So me as the printer, if I am mixing Pantone 200 for you, you're my customer, you're coming in, I literally will have a scale, like old school days. They have ink mixing machines now that like, just like a paint machine, it'll shoot this stuff into a pot, you stir it up and it's good to go. Yep. But in the old days, I would literally take a scale and I would weigh out however many grams of rubine red, then I'd put that away, then I'd get the yellow out, however many grams of yellow, and then I'd grab my black and put my black on there till I'm at 100 grams. Stir yep. that sucker up and that gives me my Pantone 200. Wow. So what that's giving you in the solid book is literally the printer's formula to manufacture that Pantone. That solid color. Right. Got it. Okay. Now, 
That's it's good. I mean, I think the the walk around of these books is extremely helpful. Um, so that's awesome. So then the next question is: Say I have I now have that Pantone two hundred C that I know will, will be used for for printed materials, yeah. and now I want to the the brand also of course lives in the digital landscape. They have a website. Mm -hmm. They want that red to match. Yep. Now, I know there are instances where certain colors are pretty damn close when it comes to, um, you know, uh, RGB to CMYK. But there are instances where I've seen it mostly if like if I'm trying to do a cream color, perhaps. Right. Um, it, it goes right to gray. It doesn't even look cream. It just goes to, you know, especially in the in the in the coded department. Um, when I go to even just like edit artwork or edit colors in Illustrator, it just kicks that cream over to a gray. Not even close. Yeah. So this is the, this is the tough part too. And, and, you know, I have this conversation with designers all the time. It's likely that your monitor that you're creating this on design on is not calibrated for the printer's proofing software, for the printer's proofs, for the, the actual press, like that calibration is not going to be aligned. Mm -hmm. So what you're visually seeing on your screen and what your customers are proofing on their iPhones or their iPads, like all of that, that's not color accurate at all. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing on the screen, that cream going to gray, it's going to look that way on screen, but that's not how it's going to look in the end. So in that case, what I would do is take that Pantone book mm -hmm. and flip to whatever that Pantone is that you're looking to recreate on screen in RGB and say, no, 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 this is, this is true color. Right. So if like, so that cream, um, that cream will exist in RGB, correct? But then when I try to convert it to CMYK, that's where the issue is coming in. It's saying it's, it's Illustrator yeah. saying it's going to be gray. So in that yeah. instance, how do I then, how can I pull that cream off in CMYK, CMYK land? So there's two answers to this. The first answer is don't. Right. Anytime you are dabbling with a gray, a cream, um, any light, really light hues, go to Pantone. 100% go to Pantone. And then just try to find something that's remotely close. Yep. And the reason I say that is because when, like on the physical printer side, like we turn away jobs that are trying to produce a CMYK cream or a CMYK gray. I turn those away. Yeah. I either get them quoted for um, Pantones or in the case of gray, some sort of um, you know, screen value, some sort of screen of, of black instead of a gray, if they're not going to pay for Pantone. Yeah. And that's because the press colors will shift slightly, even if it's one to 2%. In most colors, you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. In creams, in grays, in really light hues, it's going to show up like crazy. Interesting. Because if you're building CMYK out of a neutral cream, if there's a slight increase in the magenta on press, your cream is going to be blown out to pink and red. Yeah. Right. It makes such a big difference. So, you know, I would always just advise that any light color, like a cream or a light gray pass on the CMYK and, and include a Pantone in it. Right. So in this case, if I'm looking at, um, you know, even if I'm looking at just the coded book right here, like, I mean, and, and there's, I mean, it, it is. <laughs> It's tough because, you know, for instance, knowing I, I kind of distinctly remember that cream color and like I'm not seeing anything remotely close. You'd have to like basically say, all right, what, what am I happy with? You know, and it's yes, like totally it's yeah, cream and CMYK, just not good friends. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. But then you look at the solid colored um, side of things in the Pantone colors and there's tons of different options for solid, right? Yeah. For solid. So, okay, so then let's quickly, just to clarify on that too. So break down the the difference between the Pantone solid and the CMYK, like. Yep, so the solid is like a paint. It literally is an, is it, it has the ingredients that go into it to make it exactly what you want it to look like. Right. So that's, that's solid, that's Pantone, it's like a paint. Yep. Put it on the wall, that's your color. Yep. The CMYK is trying to create a color within the color spectrum using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, some sort of mixture, some sort of percentage of those all coming together and all the dots overlapping so that visually you see a certain color. Yep. 
So it, it takes it into the color science realm of things where the softwares from both Adobe and on the printer side are doing their best to try and create a formula to create the color you're looking to see. And, but, it's, all, and it's always going to be a crapshoot probably from printer to printer on whether those actually look consistent, right? Versus the industry standard of I'm going to give you a Pantone solid color chip. And for the most part, you're going to nail it every single time, regardless yes. of the printer, because that's they, 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 they know that color and the machines are set up to do it versus we're going to try to match that with the CMYK breakdown. Um, and we're going to hope for the best, right? Yep. Yeah. It'll, it'll vary slightly, not only with printers and their technology, because some printers, you know, getting really nerdy about this stuff when they're putting the CMYK dots down on the paper, some printers will use like a 300 DPI where you look at it and you can see the dots. There's 300 dots per inch to make up a color, to make up an image. And you can look and you see that like nice little rosette pattern to create what they're looking for. Yep. There are some printers that use the more advanced technology called stochastic, mm -hmm. um, sometimes FM screening. And that is an, an artificial intelligence created um, sequence of micro dots to the point where you can barely see the dots, even, you know, looking through one of these things, looking through a printer's loop, you can barely see the dots mm -hmm. um, and th they're just so small and they're, they're in a randomized pattern. So you don't get that rosette pattern yep. throughout things. So it'll vary with that. It'll also vary with the paper you're printing on. Some papers will be a little bit brighter white. Some will be cooler. Some will be warmer mm -hmm. and that will affect your lighter color as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, it, there's lots of variables and lots of science to think about it. And where it comes down to, you know, I always encourage people to go the extra step. After you've picked a Pantone yep. and you're going to produce this Pantone on an uncoated stock, I always suggest the next step further and say, get the printer to provide you with a drawdown on the exact paper that you're going to use to print this job. Mm-hmm. Because looking at the Pantone books, you're getting the paper that Pantone selected that makes the Pantone colors look really good. Yep. But you are likely not printing on that exact paper. So if yep. your paper is a little bit cooler, naturally your lighter colors, especially in your creams and your beiges, that color is going to be cooler. It's going to, color is going to come down. I see it. Interesting. Um, no, that's, that makes perfect sense. Um, so then generally speaking, when dealing with color, usually it's a safe bet just to stay in the solid, <laughs> solid column when, when, when pulling, you know, when, when going through the process of, of selecting a color for a brand, like stick within the solid. Rarely do you ever want to go into the CMYK unless it's for some unusual. Well, thing, correct? No, not necessarily. I would say that if you have a brand with a nice blue and a beige, yep. you that blue will have no problem in CMYK. It'll be all good. Um, but the beige, different story. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, I would give all of the information in the brand guidelines because the rest of the decisions, like it's likely that in a couple of years time after producing that brand guide, you're not going to be helping them produce that brochure. Right. So when they go to produce that brochure, it's going to come to them and they're going to be like, Hey, we can produce this as CMYK print for this price. Mm -hmm. Or we notice that you have a beige in your logo. We recommend producing that beige as a Pantone, in which case you are now printing a five color brochure. Here's your price for that. Some of those decisions get, end up being made based on budgets. Got it. So if you arm them in that brand guide with all the information and the recommendations and this beige can, you know, is best produced in PMS. If you do want to produce it in CMYK, this is the closest you're going to be able to get. This is what it looks like. That makes sense. Um, so let me hit you then with a, uh, if you don't mind, a mm -hmm. real world example. Yeah. So this goes back to the cream. Can I screen down here? What's the best way to show you this? Ooh, great. I've never been on your side of this, so I'm not entirely sure. Like, along the bottom, is there like, do you see buttons? There's a share. I, 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 so I, I'm assuming I can click on share, but I don't want to ruin anything that you might be doing on your end. Try it. Okay. Let's roll the dice here. See what we can do. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen with two monitors, blah, blah, blah. Don't show these tips again. I got it. I got it. Okay. Looks like it's going to happen. 
Oh, okay. So you share it and then I got to add it. There it is. Looks like you're seeing this, yeah? Yeah, I'm seeing it. All right. So this is for a, um, a brand we're currently working on. And this yep. is uh, the, the color specs uh, of the brand guidelines, right? So the their primary colors are this sort of, you know, what we're calling this midnight blue, this sort of dusk salmon pink. And then there's, there's our cream, right? So over here um, is is the breakdown, right? Yep. So I found the Pantone. I found a, you know I found the the Pantone for the for the blue, the pink. Cream, of course, did not have that. So, so is when, this correct in how I'm even labeling this without having a Pantone above? Yeah, that's fine. I would now that you have the Pantone books. Are you still saying that there isn't anything that visually looks good for that color? I don't think there was, it, it, it was, um, and again, like it's for them, I know it's probably going to be coded it's a bed company. So they're going to have more kind of, uh, kind of coded paper and boxes, I'm assuming. And yeah. this is where, no, I think the, everything I found was going to go too Brown or the opposite too gray. Um, so I couldn't find anything that ma that closely resembled this particular shade of cream that I, that I was happy with at least. Yeah. So this gets into two possible scenarios then. If, if there's nothing in the Pantone guide that's hitting the bill on this, and I would also check out, um, I'm not sure if your set came with it, but there's a pastels Pantone have, book. So we got it. Yeah, so maybe in the pastels book, there will be something that really fits this. Oh, let's see. But in the event that there isn't, I wanted to, before I make my, my point here, I wanted to point out that the CMYK values in that beige five, three, and six yep. in, in the printer's world, that is no ink. That literally is no ink. Yeah. It's very little. Yeah. So like I mentioned, you know, uh, you know, if there is, if yellow goes to seven while well, they're in the middle of the run with a little bit of variance and the way things go, um, that neutral cream color is going to immediately go yellow. That's going to throw everything off. Yeah. Everything off. So then what I would do in the, the next step of that would be trying to find a paint swatch, literally a paint swatch at Home Depot or wherever you're going to go that hits that color and have the printer and their ink manufacturer create a custom Pantone for this. Try to replicate it. Yeah. So now that I have the pastels and neons book open, sure enough, there is a page here <laughs> Woo! that is pretty damn close yep like pantone 9 100 9 100 9 101 like i'm um, you know even just putting i mean they're they're a little bit like probably a, you know, on, on the tanner side of things but um i would argue that it, it's probably the closest that i've seen now that i'm that i've opened up this, this particular and here's the other thing you know you're viewing it on a backlit screen Right. So, okay. you know, you can do your best to kind of match it up, but once you pull out that beige Pantone, Pantone 805 C and whatever that midnight Pantone is, those solid colors, lay them all out together. Then how do they look? Yeah. You wouldn't truly know. I'm even curious to see, um, if you wouldn't mind bearing, bearing with me on this one. So let's, I, I kind of do this little janky, like side by side thing. Yeah. Um, so oh, this is cool because I don't like, I'm not a, you know, an illustrator or InDesign pro. I know some things. Yeah. So watching like masters do their thing on screen, like that's, it's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. And, and what I, in the, when I first started dealing with this more, I found this technique of, and again, I'm not sure if it's right, but you go into edit colors, recolor artwork. And this kind of like, it quickly gives you like what you hit this little button here. Um, you go into your color books and for instance, okay, so I want to match it from the solid coded and it quickly gives you that it's, it's illustrator pulling from Pantone coded to give you what they think is the closest to what I'm trying to do. Right. Yeah. It's great. I was like, oh man, that's not even close. No. Um, so then that's when I was like, I need books to kind of really kind of do more of a deep dive. Otherwise I was literally going into, um, you know, these color books and there occasionally I would actually beat illustrator at its own game here. I would go in here and find by manually doing it. I would find something that was a, better than what they were trying to give me. Right. Yep, I, totally. You know, this one, perhaps that's not really right, but like, you know, sometimes it was kind of off. Um, yep. 
But um, so if you go into the, if you do that same thing, yeah, like you're going to do here with the pastels. Go pastels coded because I found one here that I'm interested to see. Right. Um, and then what? Just kind of type in the number. There it is. Look at that, dude. It's, it's closer. It certainly is. Yeah, it's definitely you know. pulling some of the gray out of it. And again, if you hold up your swatch book to the screen on that Pantone, they're not going to be exact. Like, because you're looking at. Yeah, digital versus printed. Um, that's nine zero. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always obviously never going to be spot on, but that that's probably the closest that I've ever, um, you know, I've ever seen this thing happen. So um, that's good. I didn't realize the pastels were even in this realm of um, even worth considering. Because I just felt pastels was kind of the pastel thing. Yep. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Um, next question is um, in moments where perhaps, and I can even get out of screen sharing here. Specifically on that, on that color slide page again, if I have a, um, a CMYK color that doesn't mirror the RGB, like it's just like that, the translation from that CMYK to RGB, of course, the RGB is going to be just much more vibrant. Yep. Um, on that color slide for the CMYK, do you then do like, how do you illustrate, hey, when, when we when we convert this to RGB, it's not close and we don't like it. So we would not suggest the direct RGB pull from the CMYK. Instead, here's the RGB version that we feel fits better. Yep. Like, I don't know if you know, like, would you then pull, like, would you then show, like if, like almost on my slide that I just showed you, right? That, that blue, for instance, Here's the CMYK. It's nice and rich and blue. But when we do a, a com, um, when we convert that to RGB, perhaps it's not close. Would I then show another bar, another wave that says, and for RGB purposes, you're going to use this particular one because yeah. it translates better. Like, yeah. So you you literally in a brand guide could end up. Here's your RGB colors. Next is here's your hex codes. Next is here's your CMYK. Here's your solid coded. Here's your solid uncoded. Whole gamut. Give them all of them. What's because it? like you're pointing out and saying, it's not a direct translation in any software from RGB to CMYK to hex to coded to uncoded. It's never a direct translation. Right. So you need to create your own cust like your own color palette for each potential use of those colors. And um Real quickly, what's the difference in between RGB and hex code? They're both digital. Yes. Um, that is a great question. I don't know a ton about hex other than like it's internet, it's it's internet friendly. Right. Right. Whereas RGB, um, you know, you've got your three colors specifically going into it. Yeah. So that's a great question. I don't really know the deep dive or proper answer to that one. Got it. Um, yeah, because it's funny because you know, in in doing just some digging and researching on on brand books and guidelines, I, I feel like it, maybe less for the bigger brands. So I think they have their stuff more together, but I, I feel like I never see that those comparisons across the board for colors. They're just like, here's your red. Yep. You know, and and I'm sure in some instances it probably directly translates fairly closely when they do say, you know, the, when they do list out the RGB directly underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel like I haven't seen a ton of. Here's your CMYK breakdown. Um, here's here's your Pantone red in, in in the CMYK. But then here's 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 how that red. Here's the red you're going to want to use for RGB because it's going to be closer than what it would have been, you know, directly yep. translated to. Yeah, and the create the the wild thing about color science though is that that specific hex code or RGB color that you're viewing on your iMac is going to be different on your iPhone. It's going to be different on your iPad. It's going to be different on your customer's big old giant PC monitor. Yep. It's going to be different when they print it out in the office. Like they're all going to have a little bit of variance. So if you as the brand designer, the brand, the person creating that brand guide for them, provide them with the information of here's the true colors in each potential form. This is how it's all going to work. Mm -hmm. Then, then you're the master. You've covered all the bases. Um, and I, I like generally to be referred to as the master. And <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> uh, 
And you know where this, like the, the best example of this is imagine a brand designer creating a beautiful online brand that looks up on Instagram, looks great on web, looks great in photos that they're viewing, you know, on their Instagram feed with like bright neon colors. That's their brand. Mm -hmm. If you go and now try and print a CMYK brochure for that brand, you're you screwed. Go. Yeah. Because those colors that you've created as that brand, those don't translate to print. Right. So in some brands, we're never going to touch print or packaging. Okay. Then go full online, do your neons, do whatever. Right. But when you go to print, like you got to anticipate that you're going to be having to use some neon pantones that you won't be able to produce in CMYK. Right. And that's, yes, I mean, uh, I not, you know, now that you were talking about that, you know, opening up the pastels and the neons book here, right? Like that's where you, you, you hope that, listen, you're never going to accomplish that, that neon green that we have online. The closest we'll ever get, if we're going to do something in, in the printed world is going to be like, you know, this neon green here, it's never going to be this and you got to be okay with that. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Super interesting. Um, that's helpful, man. The, then the, the only other two ones that I haven't broken open yet are these guys, right? The CMYK uncoded and coded, which again, these were listed out in the bridge on the right hand side. Yeah. And when would I ever use these? Remind so me. you would really use those like you went with the full on kit, which makes the most sense when you're buying so many Pantone books because parting it out just becomes even more expensive. But I would say that you would use those. You could have one designer that has the bridge because they're going to have both solid and CMYK. And in another area or with another person, you could have the two solid books and then the two CMYK books. Right. Essentially, they are the same thing, but it just gives you more flexibility. And you know, rather than going out to your customer with four books, you can now take the bridges and go out to your customer with two books because it's yeah. got them side by side. Makes sense. And again, the, um, for the most part, um, because it's widely accepted, you primarily want to stay in the Pantone solid because that's just, everyone knows that particular Pantone number. They can quickly pull it up versus the experimentation that's going to happen with the CMYK. And that's going to vary from printer to printer based off the technology and the tools they're using to try to accomplish that particular color. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, yes, it will. Like the, the real fact is, yes, it will vary a bit printer to printer, paper to paper, uh, machine to machine, the way they plate and the way they produce things. For the most part, it'll all end up pretty close. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there'll be some variance. So again, then the next step in the process of ensuring accurate color and the color that you want to see is the press check. You've gone yep. through a printing, you've spec your colors, you're now dealing with printer A instead of printer B. Go to that press check. Yeah. Go see what it's looking like. Awesome. Dude, um, that, I mean, that, that's so helpful. I appreciate I appreciate the jam, man. Your wealth of knowledge as it, as it relates to color. <laughs> Even just the walkthrough of, you know, this sweet little set, you know, that I um, I now have in my position. I'm very jealous of that set, by the way, Chris. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, this is in, in the agency world. This is I just, you know, hey, I need this. And they uh, they make it happen, which is quite nice. So yeah. this, this came out of agency pocket which is great yeah well if pantone accidentally ships you a second set let me know <laughs> uh, and, and listen if, 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 if there's anything i can do on my side if you ever need to reference it like, hey look up this freaking thing like put me to use because you know as we know reps make make me stronger as as a designer as a designer as it relates to color so if there's any is there any uh any any time that for instance you need me to look something up i mean i'm here for that for sure awesome. um and I'm trying to think if there's any other thing. Um, again, I, a lot of this felt like it was basic knowledge, but it's always good to get the basics down, of course. Um, yeah, a general walkthrough. And then what it's going to take is, you know, over the next couple of brands as you're developing and going through this process, you'll come up with, oh, what about in this scenario? Or what should? what's the best practice in this scenario? Yeah. Um, dude, hit me up. I'm available anytime. We were, I was just, and that's actually what, what caused me to buy this was we're dealing with a brand right now where we were considering a metallic color and yep. we were, and, and the conversation came up. I was like, listen, without having the book in front of me, I'm like, I found a, you know, what looks like it could be, you know, I, I found the, the, the metallic brown, but are the bronze. We were talking about bronze specifically, um, mm -hmm. bronze or gold, bronze or gold. And I was like, listen, there's so many, um, shades of that within in, in the CMYK brand. And this is for fashion brands. So there were going to be printed tags and things like that. Yep. Um, but they specifically said like, Hey, we want to pick a 
bronze that we like um, in digital form. We want to make sure we love that first, right? Because we know it's going to look shiny and pretty when we do go to print it. So we were going through this conversation of like, I don't know if we like that bronze or that bronze, that bronze. And I was like, you know what? I think it'll be good for me to at least get the um, get the coated the Pantone set, so I can have a better understanding. Because I actually couldn't find I couldn't find a really good breakdown online anywhere of um, of the booklet without having to pay for it or something. So yeah, and yeah, yeah and really online to create the metallics. They're so unique in the fact that there's that fleck in there. You're reflect reflecting light right. in different ways. That achieving that sort of look or color online is gonna be it's gonna be a tough go. And and ultimately they just couldn't get on board with like it just looks like brown. And I'm like, well, yeah, because we don't have the color spec unless we go, you know, depending on what we're making, we can add a, a Photoshop effect to give it that. But like this is the bronze. It's what it looks like when there's no sheen to it. It's not on a, on, a, on a coated paper. So ultimately we, we, we walked away from it. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what spawned this whole thing was. And I was like, I gotta get that metallic book. Um, yep. and might as well get the entire sh no, shebang, but, um, yeah. And yep. what I've seen a lot of brands do in that space, you know, when they're looking to, to use a metallic is they go, okay, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to use this on screen or on Instagram. It's not going to look the same. So, and, and sorry, and this also happens with brands that want to have their logo in foil on packaging and for luxury goods and things like that. Yep. You know, they end up having their on like a brand that could be used in both scenarios. So it looks great in black. It looks great in white. It looks great in foil and it looks great in metallic ink, you know, so it, it visually crosses over, but you're not trying to replicate one to the other. That makes sense. Yeah, like they created this online brand that complements a metallic or foil printed brand, but there's no attempt to cross over. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, all the more reason too that the mark should always work in black and white. So it doesn't, it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not contingent upon the 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 flare of, you know, uh, you know, a metallic fleck or something. But man, these books too, by the way, they just leave little bits of paper all yeah, over. Fresh, fresh die cut books. You got to flip through those for another year to stop that. <laughs> get all that all that little bits off of them um well cool man i mean my gosh thank you so much i know you're you're a busy man so i, I truly appreciate it i will i will repay you don't worry i i'm yeah, never worry no so, this is good i love these conversations i'm passionate about print and if you're telling me you're excited about print and you want to jam about it dude i'm there dude 100 i am so um that was extremely helpful and um like i said we'll uh i'll return the favor um when you least expect it my friend Ooh. does that mean i'm gonna get like some omaha steaks knocked on the door or something <laughs> I, might, I might get a big old box of it uh, <laughs> but, um yeah brother I, I appreciate it thank you so much um and like i said i'm you know i'm i'm don't be surprised if i'm pestering you again on some other things but this was extremely extremely helpful and i might even um, show you some stuff later on based off of like what I'm doing it specific on that color sheet to just say, yeah. Hey man, is, am I, am I communicating this properly? Because of course my clients won't know and I need to help them understand these things a lot better. So yep, you're the expert in training your client that, and then when it comes to print stuff, you know, I'm an expert, the printers are the experts. You got to rely on us to communicate the information to you as well and train you so that you can properly educate your customer and we're all on the same page.